Hi and welcome to another video by Jim the Car Guy. Today we're doing rear brakes on a uh, 2004 Japania Grand Prix. Uh, the rear brakes are a little bit different than the, the front brakes on these particular cars because uh, these, these calipers, when you separate them, the only way to get the, uh, the piston back in is you need a, a special tool to actually turn the piston back in. This piston cannot be pushed in. But I'm going to show you what tools you're going to need and I'm going to show you exactly how to do it step by step. Um, as you can see, there's just no way that that rotor is going to be being resurfaced. We're going to be re replacing it with a new one. Um, so uh, let me get some tools. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. And then we're going to get started. Right, the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to show you what we're going to be using here. This is the kit that you need to actually turn that piston back in. This piece here connects into the back of the piston that's inside the caliper. And this tool here rotates it back in. Now, if you don't have this tool, there is another way to do it, but let me get this off and I'm going to show you how to do it um, step by step right now. So, uh, all right, this is uh, an example of some of the stuff you're going to need. The uh, new brake pads, of course, uh, the new hardware kit to mount the brake pads into the knuckle, uh, a couple of ratchets, a few sockets, um, and that's about it. So, uh, all right, first thing we're going to do is we're going to come up underneath here and we're going to go in the back of the, uh, the, the caliper right over here and we're going to take out this bolt right here we're going to remove that bolt and we're going to remove this bolt right here and we're going to take this caliper and we're going to relocate that off to the side for now just out of our way so that we can uh, get into the back right here we can get right into the back over here and remove the, uh, the bolt right here there's one here this one here and then when you go down underneath the bottom, there's one more right up underneath here. We're going to take that out also. So first thing we're going to do is let's take this caliper and move that off to the side, and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, first thing we're going to do is take out those two bolts in the back that I told you about first. Once you break them loose, you can usually just take them right out by hand. It's not really that difficult. Don't lose them because we're going to need them to put that caliper back on. Now we're, it's a little bit tricky is trying to get the, uh, the um, caliper out. The reason for that is because the cable right here for the parking See that parking brake cable right there? That may bind up a little bit. If it does, you can just maneuver it out of there. Now, you see these little slots right here? Those are the slots that that tool has to fit into. Now, if you don't have that, okay. Now, if you don't have the tool for that, I've seen, I've done it already myself too, is you could take a pair of pliers like this, needle nose pliers, you put them in here, like this and you can rotate the piston and push it in at the same time you'll have to turn it clockwise of course to get it to turn back in it is a pain in the rear end you can do it if you had to you're going to need two hands to do it um, I'm not going to I'm going to use this tool right here we're going to take this and we're going to put this in here like that just like this and then we're going to put our tool in there and we're going to turn it. So uh, let me get that tool and I'm going to show you. Now, before I do anything, these, these, as these cars get older, these boots right here tend to stick to the caliper. You don't, want to you don't want to twist this boot and rip it. So what I normally do is get in here with the scribe and just go underneath that seal. It's just a dust seal, so you don't have to worry about a leaking fluid. Just move that dust seal just a little bit around like this so that it does rotate. That way when this piston turns here and it turns in, you're not going to damage that seal. So, uh, all right, let me grab my tool and let's get started. Okay. Now, remember what I told you about these tools here? You can get in here with a pair of needle nose pliers and you can rotate it and try to turn it back in and push it at the same time. And it will go in. It's a pain in the rear end, but it does go in. See? The key with this one is that when I made that made sure that that rubber seal the dust seal on the outside was nice and free all right and then you turn it 
and you're going to line it up so that these are back in the same position they were before you started to rotate it. And as you can see, that piston pushed back in. Now, if we had the tool, I'll show you. The tool would do basically the same thing. The tool goes in here, like that. It fits in here, like this. And then you turn this, like that. And then you can turn it in by hand. That keeps constant pressure to keep it from sliding out. All right? Um, but, you know, in a pinch, you can use these. But this is the correct way to do it here. And now when you have this tool in there, you basically just put a wrench on here. And you just turn this, and it'll rotate and turn that piston all the way back in. All right? But we were able to do it with the, uh, with the uh, as a street mechanic would do it. All right, so now for, for now we're just going to relocate this off to the side right here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come underneath the bottom over here, and we're going to remove this screw here. And then we're going to remove this screw here, and we're going to take this mounting bracket here off of the car. So uh, let me do that, and we're going to continue with that. That's a 12, uh, that's a uh, 13 millimeter, the mounting bolts in the back there. I'm going to break them loose. Now don't take them both out, you're just going to break it loose for now. Because if you break, if you take this bottom bolt out and you try to loosen this one, the whole bracket's going to slide up and out of the way. Alright, so break it loose. And once you break it loose, then you can just take the two of them right out. Don't lose them because we're going to need to, uh, to use them over again. Okay, we're just going to take this bracket off for now. It's actually supposed to slide right off, but that's how rusty it is. So uh, I'm going to show you what to do with this in a minute. Take your rotor off the car, of course. And what we're going to do, I just want to point this out to you. The back of the rotor is just as bad as the front of the rotor. Okay? That's why it doesn't really pay to uh, even machine this rotor. It's, it's, it's beyond machining. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here with our, with our wheel, and we're going to clean this up right here. And um, we'll clean it up. And then once I have it clean, then we'll come right back. Now, you can use, you can use the, the disc to clean it up. You can use a razor to clean it up. You can use a piece of sandpaper to clean it up. You can use a scraper to clean it up. Whatever you have at your disposal, use that. Just make sure that all that rust comes off there. Otherwise, you're going to have a pulsating pedal, and you're going to be kicking yourself. All right, let me clean it up, and we'll come right back then. Okay, once you've got it all cleaned up, Put your rotor on it, and then just to make it a little bit easier for yourself so that it doesn't move all over the place, just screw a lug nut onto it to hold the rotor in place while you, uh, while you put your mounting bracket back on. Alright, so we'll do that for now. Next thing I want to show you, I'm going to move this stuff here out of the way. Alright, next thing I want to show you is down here on the workbench, or on my cart I should say. We're going to change these pieces right in here. The brake shoe or pad, you can just take it out. It's rusty, so you can just tap it out. Same thing here, just take it and tap it. And we're just going to take that off to the side. These mount, these hardware kits, we're just going to take these off and throw them away. Same thing over here. Now, you have to Okay, you've got to make sure that the, uh, that the bracket here where these clips go into that there's no significant amount of rust on there. If there is, you grab a file and you file it to get it out of there. There really isn't any rust on here. It's a little bit of like 
residue on here, but it's not really any rust. You just clean it up just a little bit here just to get any kind of stuff off like that. Really nothing to worry about. Then you're going to take your new clips. There's only one way they can go back on there. You can't really make a mistake. You put it over the top. I'll try to do this so you can see. Over the top like this. And you squeeze it. And it goes right back down. All the way down in here where it's supposed to be. See? Now we're going to do the same exact thing up on this one here. Put it on top. Squeeze it. Push it down. And that's all the way in there. Alright. So that's what your mounting uh, hardware kit looks like. Next thing we're going to do is you always see me using these synthetic grease on these. On these, uh, anywhere that the brake pad touches, you put the grease on. You're also going to lubricate these slide pins here. You have to make sure that these pins slide nice and freely. If they don't slide freely and they stay binding, it's going to prematurely burn up your brakes. All right, pull the pin out, lubricate it like this, and you're going to do one pin at a time because they have to go back in the same hole that they came out of. And push it in. Same thing on this side here. See how this one is different? It doesn't have the O-ring on it. So just lubricate it like this. And then we're just going to push it all the way back in. And I want to point this out to you. When you push it in, make sure it snaps all the way back in to where it's supposed to be here. See it pops up. Watch this one here, you'll see. Pops up over the top like that. So now, now no, mo no moisture can get inside here. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to lubricate every place that the brake pad touches. We're going to put grease like this. Same thing here. And just so you know, there is no such thing as too much grease on these uh, on the sliders here. All right. Next thing we're going to do now, I want to point this out to you. You see that this brake pad has your indicator on there. You want to make sure you get the one with the indicator that's in the same position. You see this one? This is actually a mirror image of it. You see how that indicator here is on the bottom? So this one we don't need. This is the one that we're going to put on. We also know that is the inner brake pad because that's where the piston was touching right there. And you remember what I told you about the, that caliper? See these little pins right here? I'll show you another one. You see this little pin here? That's why I said that you should have that caliper facing straight from back to front because this pin has to fit into that caliper. I'm going to bring you up there. I'm going to show you in a minute again. All right, so this one now goes inside here like this. Push it in here like this. It's a little tight because it keeps it from rattling around. But if you lubricate it, everything, it should slide nice and freely. And you can do this later on, but I find it easier doing the inner pad here then later on when it's in there. All right, put it in like this, all right? And if you want, you can do the outer one. I'm going to because it's a little easier here than later on in there. Put it on like this, slide it into its position like that. And that's where it pretty much belongs right now. All right, now, let me show you up here again. You remember what I told you about these uh, these pins right here, that they have to go back in the position where they were? The reason that that's like that is because that little pin on the back of the shoe or pad is going to fit right in there like that. I don't know if you can see that, but you see how that little piece fits right in there? That's why it's important that you put it back that way. All right? So, uh, all right, so that's pretty much the, uh, the extent of that. Then we're going to take our, our caliper, mount the bracket, put it over the top like this, squeeze the pads to hold it in place, and then you can reinstall your bolts that you previously took out. You're going to screw them both in by hand. You're not going to tighten them up.
screw them in as far as you can by hand. And then once you got them in as far as you can, then you can bring your ratchet in and you can tighten it up so that it's tight. Same thing on the bottom one here. That's why I like my swivel head ratchet. It gets you, you can get into those tight spots where when you're with a regular ratchet, it's a little bit more difficult. You can have that little bit of flexibility on the head. All right? Now, after you've got that all back in there pretty much where it belongs, we're just going to take that caliper and we're going to lay it right back over the top here like this. And then we're just going to push these little slide pins out of the way so that we can slide the caliper back in. And then we're going to catch those two bolts that we previously took out. We're not going to tighten them. We're just going to screw them in there by hand. Okay, same thing on the bottom. Bring it in there, I'll show you. Okay, screw them in as tight as you can by hand. Same thing here. Now sometimes it matters on some cars these pieces have to go a certain way here. On this particular one it doesn't matter. I always try to keep them this way here. Um, but you could tighten these down now by hand and then we're going to put a ratchet on it and we're going to tighten that up the rest of the way. Now remember I think that one was a 14 millimeter. So we're just going to tighten those bolts up now on top here. As you can see, I'm actually show you. What I'm actually doing is with my thumb, I'm just keeping this from rotating. If by chance you're trying to tighten this up here, and as you're tightening it, the slide pin is rotating, then you can go and grab a wrench. It's probably going to be like a 16 millimeter, and you can hold this slide pin with the wrench like this to keep it from rotating while you tighten that up. That's not the case here, so I'm not going to worry about it. And then we're going to tighten up this one here, same way. I just hold it with my thumb until it snugs it up. And now we're just going to tighten it and make sure it's tight. And that's it. All right, so now I'm just going to recap exactly what I did again. Road is on. We cleaned up the hub right here. We put the mounting bracket back on where it previously was removed from. Um, we tightened up this bolt here as well as this bolt down underneath here. We tightened up this bolt here and this one that holds the caliper to the mounting bracket. We replaced our hardware inside here. We lubricate everywhere that the brake pad touches so it's nice and, and lubricated. Um, now remember you could use this to rotate the piston back in or you can use the tool that's actually made for it, like this. All right, so you know what? When I do the other side, I'm going to show you on the other side how this tool works versus using this. Because truthfully, this worked too easy. It never works that easy. It's always a pain in the rear end to try to turn that in. So I'm going to show you on the other side how to do this here. All right, so let me get over to the other side, and I'll, uh, I'll show you how this tool works. explain to you how this tool works. You take this tool and you slide this tool and we'll recess it all the way back like this. You take these, put it in here like this, and it locks in place like that. And then you turn this outer piece here so it brings it in like this. Okay? And you grab your, your wrench. You hold your tool here with either your hand or a wrench. And you rotate this, and it turns that piston back in. Okay. Make sure you push all the way back in. And then you remember what I told you about lining those pins up inside there. They have to be lined up 
put the, uh, you can see they're not lined up here. You see how these are here? They're not lined up, so now we need to just turn it back just a little bit so that it lines up just the way it's supposed to. You could do it with the tool, you could do it with needle nose pliers, whatever, but now you can see it's lined up and ready to accommodate the new brake pad. All right, so either way you can do it. If you want to use this tool, you can use it. If you don't have this tool, you can use a pair of needle nose pliers. Watch you don't stab yourself in the hand if it slips off. And that's it. You're pretty much all set. All right, thanks for watching. Any questions or comments or you need any information, just drop me a line. I'd be more than happy to talk to you about anything. All right, thanks for watching. And like always, see you on the next one.